I read a lot of philosophy because I had the belief that with enough awareness and well-designed system, the human species could flourish. I, I realize now no system will ever work because human beings are only interested in pursuing their own selfish interests at the expense of others. During that time, I read a book, The Fountainhead, in which the heroine took the most exquisite piece of art, a porcelain figure, and flung it down an elevator shaft. At the time, I couldn't conceive of why anyone would do something like that. In fact, I've spent a lifetime saying hello to my dreams with focus and conviction while ignoring what is. In the last couple of years, I've lost all hope, not because your message is incorrect or because I can't create, but because there is more to it than that. You cannot minimize what goes on out there with a single pleasant sounding word like contrast. It, you come down here, take a body, be subjected to a childhood of abuse, an adult life of business failures, betrayal, financial ruin, divorce, and constant barrage of exploitation from your fellow man and big business, and then stand before me with this message. How many people in history are capable of doing that? So I came here today to tell you that as I survey the infestation on this planet, I am disgusted. I now feel mostly hatred for people and their ignorance, stupidity, and petty strivings towards shallow money trenches they dig to insulate themselves and parade around in tacky luxury. I see the majority of people trapped in lives that bear no resemblance to their desires, and more often than not suffering in the most awful ways as a result of others inserting themselves in their experience. And you're never going to convince me that six million victims of World War II genocide, or any of the other many genocides over history for that matter, were all a match to their experience. I have absolutely no doubt that history will repeat itself, and wars will dominate the majority of people once again for the next 4,600 years. We think that what you flip your lid up just a little bit so we can see you, unless you don't want us to see you. Take your hat off, maybe, so we could see your face. I don't really want to be videotaped. In fact, your staff is very insistent on videotaping me, and that's not really what I wanted. Well, take I the camera off of him. It's all right. Take the camera off of him. And we are not going to try to make anything happen. We just want to look at you ourselves. So we don't disagree with anything that you've said. And we would not for a moment express, you can videotape us. <laughs> we would not for a moment express that there is anything uh, inappropriate about the perspective that you've found. And uh, anyone with a reasonable mind, um, which includes everyone in this room and those looking on, would agree in part to a lot of the things that you've said, that there are, um, we'll use more words than contrast, there are horrendous, um, unfair, unthinkable, unspeakable, acts and behaviors and perspectives that are going on all around the world. In other words, this is a world of uh, contrast of immense proportions. And when we say that it's the best of times and the worst of times, we're not kidding because the contrast does get greater and greater. Man's ability to inflict pain and harm upon one another is also increasing, as is man's ability to find love and harmony. And we get how when you are part of a world that has access to so much information and so much detail that sometimes it defies the, uh, it, make, it would make you feel foolish to put your head in the sand and pretend that unspeakable things either have not happened or are not happening because the fact of it is they're happening all around you. But having said all of that, we also know that every one of you came forth into these human bodies and these bodies of beasts with clear foresight of what was here. Not one of you believed, was told or believed that everything was all smoothed out. Not one of you wanted that because you believed that you would carve your life out of the content of that which was here. And none of you would have come forth if there had been a promise that you would have not had choices. That's the most important thing. It's hard to believe when people are living unwanted things. It's hard to believe that 
they are, have been given free will and that their choices are being honored because it's hard to believe that someone would choose something unspeakable or unthinkable or horrific or horrendous. It's hard to believe that. And that's why we are here having conversations with those who are interested because we agree with you. People don't realize that they're making those choices. So it feels like it's something that's being done to them. And the reason that they don't believe that they're making those choices is because not one of you, or it would be a rare few of you, would acknowledge that I would do or anyone would do these unspeakable things to myself. So it makes you believe that there must be some other factor involved. There must be some source of darkness. There must be some source of badness. There must be some cosmic debt to pay. You come up with all kinds of things in your explanation of the unwanted things. And so we enter the picture in response to powerful wanting, yours being a strong part of it. You're not the only one on the planet who feels this way. As you look around these gatherings, these are very small groups out here on the leading edge because the majority of people do not want this simplistic uh, response to things that feel so big. But we want you to understand that unless you start at a sort of basis of understanding of how it is that things are coming to you, until you understand that, then you cannot understand how anything is coming to any other. And when you begin to make the association between what you're thinking and how you're feeling and how things are turning out, then you begin to get some insight into what's happening to others. The biggest piece, and we know that it is borderline sickening to humans to hear this from us, but the biggest piece that is missing in the understanding of human friends is that the horror that you've assigned to the death experience is not what you've made it out to be at all. And that that's one of the advantages that the beasts give to you is that they come and go and 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 come and go because they reach levels of maturity so much more easily. And so the joy that they feel is proportionately greater in other words even though often they come to what you would call some terrible end they that terrible end is very brief in relationship with the delicious romping that they've been experiencing Absolutely. and humans do not allow themselves that benefit because humans are so busy speculating the what has gone wrongness that they hold themselves in vibrational discord with the rightness that their own individual lives have actually carved out uh, this is not about the death experience in terms of it being horrendous it's about the damage that is done, the unfinished business, the children left behind, the families disrupted, the lives destroyed, and all of the experience which we live in that process. Well, you see, what you, what you are doing, and it is unique to you, in that your caring is greater than most feel. But what you have done is you are taking upon yourself, through your attention to detail, um, the burdens of the discomfort of the lives of so many over which you have no creative control. So, so the darkness that you are feeling and the horror of it, the injustice of it, is because you personally cannot do anything about any of that. But we want to say to you, you're taking so much more of it on yourself than is yours to take. And that any individual that is experiencing any of the pieces of that, that, that you're defining, is not feeling as badly about it. At one point, early in her experience with us, Esther was watching something on television. It was something that had happened in another part of the world. And it happened to children. And the mothers were wailing. And as Esther was watching it, she was beside herself with discomfort. And she said to us, Abraham, if I am feeling this much discomfort over watching something from which I am so completely removed, what must it be like for those people who are in the midst of all of that? And we said to Esther, your pain in this moment is greater than theirs. Because the contrast mm -hmm. between who you are and what you are living and what you are allowing right now mm -hmm. is greater. Mm -hmm. And because in the midst of that, other things are happening to them. They, other coping mechanisms are taking yeah. place. Yeah. That's the most significant thing. So you 
do a real disservice to yourself and we, we're not trying to talk you out of it because you're launching all kinds of global rockets of desire but we're just saying to you that you will not be able to sort yourself out of this by getting more and more specifics we have never heard more articulate conversation we have never heard words come together more accurately or comprehensively you are really good at conveying what you are feeling and you've taken on yourself the discomfort and discord of maybe millions of people and uh, directed it to us in perhaps the most profound and powerful way that we've ever experienced it and in all of that we only have simplistic answers for you those answers are life is supposed to be good not just for Esther and not just for some but for all of you and when it isn't something has gone terribly wrong yeah. and every single time the thing that has gone terribly wrong is that an orientation or a perspective has been developed and practiced to the point that other evidence can't come in in other words when you have decided something in a very powerful way mm -hmm. then it must be because law of attraction will always present to you exactly the package that you are practicing all day every day you've got no argument with that and so our we do not sense that your life reflects this now in this powerful way at one time yes but we want to say to you that you are taking more upon yourself this is really what we would like to say to you in the same way that Esther, through allowing Abraham, is a voice that really perpetuates more and more people coming into their personal alignment and allowance. That when someone as articulate and accurate as you are presents an opposing point of view, that you are, in essence, not creating for the masses, but you are presenting a vibrational forum that allows that grid to fill in more easily because you cannot be a vibrational match to something without perpetuating it you just cannot be mm -hmm. so silly as this is going to sound to you right now we want to say you're just having one hell of a step one moment mm. you're just having that I know what I don't want moment and if you were not from the core of your being someone who understood so profoundly that that is not the way it is meant to be you would not be experiencing the discord and discomfort that you're experiencing in other words the enormity of your outrage Jerry said to Esther you're aware of Jerry oh yes I've met you Esther and Jerry Jerry, what, Jerry said to Esther he, she, he's writing to her nearly every day he said to Esther I understand the profound depth of your love for me by the profound depth of the pain you are feeling in believing in the absence of me and this is sort of what we'd like to say to you is that we know of the depth and the power of who you are and what you are really wanting you are a powerful being who understands well-being at the very depth of your being and when you focus for a little bit or for a long while as you have upon the opposite of that then it is logical that you would feel in the way that you feel I've spent a lifetime doing this work I read clairvoyantly I could read everybody in this room and they'd go home with a really good piece of information and I see I'm sensitive and I see very deeply and what I see after a lifetime of putting stuff in the vortex is that when is my moment? When is my moment? If you want to take this from the general to the personal, okay. It's not here. It's not coming. And the stuff in the vortex isn't there. And I'm living misery. And I have been for a long time. Ever since I really practiced my art, becoming more sensitive is, is part curse. Well, your perspective is valid. And uh, we would not for a moment try to talk you out of it. But we do feel in all that you have said here that your desire is different than the reality that you are describing. And that as long as that desire is pulsing within you, and it is, that we will continue to give our undivided, whether you believe it or not or even care or not, we will continue to give our undivided attention to that. And we want to say to you that you represent not necessarily large numbers of people but you represent in your discourse here the perspective of humans that believes that they are not the creator of their own reality that they have no creative control and we want to say clearly to you that you do create your own reality that you are creating your own reality and that everyone is not having the experience that you have described 
in fact, the majority of the people who are here in this room do not resonate with what you're saying at all. They are eager to allow this conversation because they all know people who feel a bit like you're feeling, but they don't feel this way.